Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol at Big Cat Rescue and right now I am waiting on Lisa Spencer Novak. She was working out here with all of the other wonderful volunteers and interns this morning. They are working on Jasmine the Tiger's enclosure. We locked Jasmine up this morning in her roof section so that they could go in there and mow and weed eat and get rid of the wasps. We always seem to have wasps that congregate on those wooden platforms up in the uh, overhang up there at the roof so we get rid of those every time we go in. And I don't know what Lisa is going to be talking about today. I don't know if this is going to be Kids for Cats. I don't think it'll be singing. I think singing is probably singing Sunday tomorrow, although I'm kind of losing track of the days now. So I went live to show everybody what they were doing over there, but... Um, yeah, okay. Are, are we still live? We're still live. Okay. Hi! <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is Lisa here with Carol at Big Cat Rescue. We just got off a project. We've been working on Jasmine Tiger's enclosure. Just tidying it up. Um, obviously, we're not with Jasmine Tiger in the enclosure while we're tidying it up. Uh, that's. No, no, no. Jasmine has been supervising from a distance, but yeah, we are, we are safely locked away, and there's quite a protocol. You may have noticed that Dylan um, walked me over. Um, he's a level five intern, and so he has that clearance. I can't even go from the project past Jasmine to come out here and meet Carol on my own. I have to be with somebody who has that level of clearance. So it's very uh, well thought out. A lot, a lot of safety protocols here. So yeah, so we've been. <laughs> We've been mowing and raking and making it nice for it. Sorry, sorry. It got tangled up on my water. Sorry about that. Here. Uh, there. Is that better? Somehow we're tangled up right here. There. That's better. There we go. We got it. So we're going to get a treat here. Um, Miss Jasmine is going to get a shower, which she really loves. It's very warm here in Tampa today, so that's going to feel really good. And tigers are natural lovers of water. Aww. <laughs> oh, no, it feels so good. I know. <laughs> So every tiger does have a pool in their enclosure and then our vacation rotation, which is two and a half acres, um, tiger timeshare that they take turns sh um, spending a whole month in, that has a pond. Dylan, was that your first cat to net this morning? Yes, it was. That was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a little scary, but... What did he do? Everybody went yeah. Uh, so we had to net uh, Bailey the bobcat because she had was limping and holding up her paw not putting any weight on it and although she was running just fine around yeah that she cage. was running <laughs> oh she's done well done Jesse. <laughs> uh, uh, so carol and afton that were trying to net uh, bailey and i was covering the den that was in the bubble that we were in with the net and bailey tried to run into the the den that was covered by the net so she ran right into it and i was able to uh, cover her and get her Get her captured so that the apple can come over. We can get her into the squeeze cage so we can go get her to take her to the hospital. Awesome. So it, was, it was exciting, but a little scary at the same time. Imagine, yeah. You did a really good job of it, getting that net down over them is so hard because yeah. they're mad and they're Right, so right. <laughs> he was mad. I can imagine. That was very refreshing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, she, yeah, she says, oh yeah, they got that door shut. Those people are still in there. It's going to be so nice when you get in there, though. Yeah, it's going to be nice and fresh. 
It also makes it easier on our cleaners. Um, they're the reason for taking care of that when the grass gets overgrown and so forth because they're trying to find poop um, in the enclosure. So it does help them. Yep, you always have to watch when a tiger tail goes up. <laughs> <laughs> Could always be a sign. Oh, we may as well walk along Tiger Row here. So we are here at Big Cat Rescue in Tampa, Florida. Those of you that are new joining us today. And hello Amanda, <laughs> one of our keepers. Awesome. So we sit on 67 acres. And the enclosures, I hope you can see them as we're going along. Uh, as you notice, Jasmine, that bubble she was in was not the um, full extent of her enclosure. That was just one section uh, because we were working in the other section. So she has both a section with a roof and a section that has no roof. And only the tigers can do that. Uh, and lions. Other cats, like Manny the Jaguar, if they had a section without a roof, they would find a way to get out. They're climbers and jumpers. So they cannot have enclosures without roofs. So as we walk along here, after I just got done saying that, these are all tigers enclosures. They have roofs. <laughs> so there's always an exception, right? But these are our Guatemalan tigers on the right. This is Kimba and Max, and Simba is over here. I see Max is in his pool. Maybe we should go check that out. So they arrived here the Monday before Thanksgiving, and that was an international rescue. They had been in Guatemala in a circus and had been rescued when the circus was outlawed. Oh, somebody's demanding attention. Simba looks like he's been in his pool. He's a little drippy. Did you just have a swim? Yeah. He's making a very happy tiger sound right now, that tiger chuff. That means I'm happy. I just had a swim. Ooh, did you find poop? Can we see your tiger poop? Oh, sure. Look at it. It's enormous. It's, enorm it's enormous, man. There's still more. Awesome. It's amazing how quickly you get interested in poop when you start cleaning. Yes. <laughs> when you start dreaming about <laughs> oh, he's making his move. Oh, Max. You can see he has a nice drippy belly, though. He was enjoying his pond there. Good, good. Good boy. Yay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Do you think it needs to go? It's really hard to get the thing yeah. right so that it's not scratching against the mask. All right, let me, let me take a look at it, everybody. Sorry. Test, test. Is that any better? So can somebody give us a mic check? Test, test. Oh, check, check. Talking. Is that better? It takes a while. Yeah. To I'm going to keep talking for a minute. Let me know if oh, that seems right. better. <laughs> yeah. So Simba's taking us a walk. Maybe he's heading back to his pool here. He looks like he might be. Yep. Nope. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know, that's always the way with a cat. You know, big or small, when you want them to do, they do things on their own terms, for sure. Maybe he's going to the far one. Yeah. He's got more than one pool to sit in. And he's got several bubbles which is um, this rounded shape and we're coming up on hurricane season here at Big Cat Rescue in Tampa, Florida and that um, enclosure shape, that design is for aerodynamic purposes that helps them withstand those hurricane force winds. It's the reason why they're not, you know, square and rectangular upright. It's that it's not better. So not better. Okay, sorry. Bear with me. So, what about like right here on your cat? Oh, there's a great idea. She's so smart. Well, <laughs> you're a problem solver, this girl. Is look ridiculous, but <laughs> can you hear me? All right. Let's can you hear me now? Like now? Is that any better? We're experimenting with the mic position today. <laughs> is that working any better? Uh, Diane says it's echoing. Echoing. Okay. She says can hear better when it's outside the mask. Oh, okay. So maybe. I wonder.
don't know if that's too close to my face. How's that sound? Is that working any better? It's better, but I don't know if that was from the mat or here. Right. Um, Missy says that's much better. Much better. Okay, we'll try it. Try it this way. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, we're constantly problem solving here <laughs> in coronavirus. Oh, let's see. I'm tempted to go where there's shade. <laughs> <laughs> we were working, um, as you saw earlier, those of you that are with us, on Jasmine's enclosure in the sun. Started out by cutting the grass and then um, raking and picking up piles. And the another piece of that that makes it kind of labor intensive is that we do have a lot of safety precautions when we're working in an enclosure. So if one of us needs to go out, say, to get new bins, the bins get filled with... Um, you know the debris the the leaves and so forth and need to be loaded up onto the golf cart and we need bins that are empty to fill it well it's not a matter of just opening the door and walking out so there are two gates so you have to unlatch the first gate you have to latch it behind you and then say you're taking something out like when I pulled the lawnmower out I had to push the lawnmower in latch it behind me and then wait until that was latched to open the next gate and then push the lawnmower out and make sure that was latched behind me. So every time you enter or exit, you're going through these protocols. So that just adds another, another piece to the puzzle. But it's important. It better on the hat. Oh, yeah, better on the hat. Okay, thanks for telling me. Appreciate that. Appreciate your feedback, everybody. And even though she's talking about having to open and shut all those doors, Jasmine's locked in behind a guillotine door with a flap over top of the door and a lock on that flap. So, I mean, we are really being careful so she never has any access exactly. to the world. Exactly. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's a very good point because that it's, it's just like an extra level of precaution that we're doing that. There's just no chance that she would breach that barrier between the two enclosures. But we're all about safety here for many reasons. Obviously, we don't want any of the volunteers to get injured. We also don't want the cats to, they would suffer the consequences if they did injure somebody and we don't want that to happen. We don't want to put them in that position. So we're just very mindful of that and all about safety. All right, how about we go shade, shade <laughs> direction. I'm, I'm voting for shade today, everybody. Is that where the cats will be? Yeah, this, when it starts to get warm, the cats are not quite as front and center. Hopefully Mr. Jinx will be right up here in this front den. We might get to glimpse him as we go by. This is our Funcation rotation. And this is where all the cats except the tigers um, spend a month. This is their vacation area. And notice that this one has a roof on it. So that allows Aries Cougar, Manny Jaguar, Jinx the Black Leopard, those cats to be able even the bobcats I've seen the bobcats like like spider-man right up that cage wire <laughs> so doesn't matter the size they can they can manage it just fine can't tell if that shadow oh. uh -huh. just the other side of the den <laughs> yay jinx spotting if we go around hello handsome Hello. He has found a shady spot. Hi. Are you enjoying your vacation? Ooh, whoops, went the wrong way. Sorry about that. Are you enjoying your vacation? Huh? Let me show you my face for a minute. See who I am? Okay. Yeah, I think the cats are adjusting to all of us wearing masks. <laughs> so he has managed to find a nice shady spot here. Can imagine that if you're all black in the sun that that's going to be a little uncomfortable. So he is a black leopard um, and you notice that tail that he's got curled around. Leopards have those nice long tails because they are tree climbers. Their adaptation in the wild is that they catch their prey and they stash it up in tree limbs to keep it away from other predators. Leopards live in Africa and Asia. So in Africa, they're keeping uh, prey away from other uh, predators such as lions. And in Asia, they're keeping away from tigers. 
So for that reason, they have that nice long tail. And you can see, I think, pretty well that he's got spots. They're showing up pretty well through his fur right now in this little bit of sunlight. Hello, handsome. Hello. We'll give you some space. Hello. Hi, handsome. So there are two types of cats that can be black, and we've all heard the term Black Panther, I'm sure, get used. And of course, it was a great movie and comic book. But panthers uh, technically are not black in the wild. And when we think of panther, we think of other names like mountain lion and cougar and puma. And that cat is never black. So the two that produce that melanism are leopards and jaguars. And that is a naturally occurring event. And if you think about nature, uh, things that ensure survival get passed on. That's how it works. So if you have a litter of leopards and one of them is black, well, that's a pretty good adaptation uh, to be successful, to be able to hunt. You can move in the shadows, you can hunt at night, and it's going to be very effective. And this is the complete opposite of a white tiger, which is not good camouflage at all because they are native to rainforests. So a white tiger is actually only a product of inbreeding. That is a man-made um, event. They are not found in the wild. It's not a separate species that needs to be conserved. So. And so many people ask why we don't just turn all the white tigers loose in Siberia. Oh my. Wow. Well, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> okay, so we can't just turn all the white tigers loose where there's snow because there is actually a species called a Siberian tiger that is native to that area and they are much much larger and thicker fur they're they're adapted to that climate um, if you have a white tiger who's been bred from i don't know a bengal there well there's so many things i don't even know where to start <laughs> they've been bred in captivity um, so they don't know anything about the habitat and survival but even if there was some kind of instinctual they're not bred from the right species to live in Siberia, so no, they would not be able to survive. No cat that is bred in captivity can just be let loose in the wild. They don't have the skills. Um, they learn that from their mothers for two, at least two years. Uh, they learn how to be, hello, you keep distracting me with those eyes. <laughs> yes, you do. So if you don't have that chance as a cat to learn from your mother, and you don't have an experience out in the wild, um, you're just not going to be able to survive. And it, it does, obviously it's not ideal to have any cat kept in captivity, but if that's how they have lived their whole life and we are rescuing them, that's the only option. It's just not possible to have them live in the wild like they were intended to. A lot of people are asking how Bailey is. I don't know if they can oh. see my She's in the hospital yeah. and they're trying to get some meds into her. Okay, so her Bailey bed. Bobcat is in the hospital right now. They're trying to get some meds into her. She had an injured paw. Do you, know, do you know which one, Carol? I don't know. Front right. Front right paw. And she's fine. She's just mad. As yeah, she's, she's doing fine, but, you know, she's, she's not too happy about being in the hospital. And most of the cats, that's, that's not, it's just like your house cat doesn't, get thrilled about going to the vet you know no no cat likes to be trapped and forced into any situation that's just their natural response to that so you being such a good boy just sitting there showing everybody how handsome you are I can barely see through these glasses but they're saying they love his eyes so I'm hoping that they're showing up okay oh yeah he's that you're dueling a little bit there but it's okay and yes Moses <laughs> is fine Moses is fine so I'll have to remember tomorrow to only look for one pile <laughs> when I clean. So it's very cute. We have a few bobcat pairs. Um, Moses and Bailey are together and Sue and Lakota and Kelowna and Dryden. And they do what we call co-poop. <laughs> they do tend to poop kind of close to each other, which is nice when it comes to cleaning and trying to find that. Aww. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this, this could pretty much be the rest of my day. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be quite happy. Hopefully they're going to have some sickles later, huh? 
So those of you that uh, don't know this, we do offer various enrichment to the cats in addition to their regular feeding. And one of the enrichments is a sickle, just like anybody likes a nice cold popsicle on a hot day. But I don't think the flavors that the cats enjoy would sell very well at uh, any of our local ice cream stands. Uh, their favorite is blood and closely followed by tuna sickles and sardini martinis. So it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's blood that's frozen, but it's a delicious treat for them. And it also helps with hydration, which is really important, especially in older cats. That's um, very common to have uh, kidney issues as cats age, both house cats and large cats. So that extra hydration is um, just really something good for them, especially the hotter it gets. I guess he's decided he's had enough screen time today. Okay. Okay. That was epic. Yes, it was. <laughs> Never pass up a chance to see Jinx, that's for sure. That better? Okay. And I'm still adjusting. I still want to see Aries over here. I haven't <laughs> quite made the switch. We have had some cat moves recently. Uh, I wonder if he's like more in the back. I didn't see him the other day. When no. I was around here. I was for all the so this used to be a cougar enclosure, and we have. Yeah, it. maybe we should. And we've moved some cats around. Oh, there he is. He's right under the platform. <laughs> well, hi, Zukari. Hi! You enjoying the shade, huh? So my understanding, I believe if I'm right, Carol, he told me last week that part of the reason for this was that he really likes to go on vacation, but it was harder to move him there from where he was before. Yeah. Well, hello, handsome. So Zukari is an African serval. And he's our youngest serval here on property. And he came to us from a breeder in Ohio. He was uh, confiscated along with two caracals, Chaos and Cyrus. And so he has a nice big enclosure and he's very active. So that's important for him to have that space. But I will say our smallest enclosure is 1200 square feet. So that's the size of an average house. So the cats do have plenty of space. This is what you're seeing right now is just one section, one bubble. You can think of it like you have rooms in your house. You have your kitchen and your bathroom and your bedroom and your living room, all those different spaces. He's got a lot of bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. <laughs> and then right next to Carol here is a feeding lockout. And I know Zucari is one of the cats locked out when he gets fed. He's very... Um, energetic shall we say <laughs> and he can get grabby with his paws so they make sure that this guillotine door is down and then the food is placed right here on this concrete slab and there's his water dish so that door would be down yeah that would door would be down when his food is dropped because what the feeder would do is just put their hand above and let the food drop so we have a tile here protecting the water dish from evaporation and also debris and it's up because somebody liked to poop in their water dish when it was on the ground so therefore and he's um, the water dishes I notice as I've started cleaning are very much adjusted to each individual cat um, the older cats they're we always make sure they're put in really um, good proximity and low enough so they can reach them you know because you don't want them having to work to get their water but no worries with him. He can definitely reach that and, and he won't poop in it. But you can see all of this. This is all still, still him. <laughs> and it extends back a ways as well. See? All the way back there. When this cage was originally built, it was built for five cats. So it's ah, much bigger than interesting. You know, the cages. Ah. Ginger's out too. So Ginger is another recent move. Now she was along here on Serval Row, but she was on the opposite side. So again, she's been moved a little bit closer to vacation. Yes, 
classic serval hiss. <laughs> it's a very classic greeting we're getting there from Ginger. That's what servals do. Not good, though. Servals are very aggressive. Don't let the small size fool you. But unfortunately, um, they become popular in the exotic pet trade. And people mistakenly think because of their small size that it's somehow appropriate to keep them as a pet. And nothing could be further from the truth. These cats are hunting in Africa next to leopards and lions um, in that same um, territory. So they are very aggressive and their hunt success rate is 50% of what they, ca they um, hunt they catch. So those are not good characteristics for <laughs> living in somebody's house. <laughs> makes them the most successful of yes characters. so they will not want to use the litter box they will spray everything they will use their claws and teeth they will jump they will tack ceiling fans because they're known for cat being able to catch birds out of the air when they're hunting so just not an ideal choice and to make matters worse where Zukari came from the reason he was with the breeder is because they make hybrid cats uh, with servals and domestic cats called savanna cats. So he was kept there for that purpose. So again, um, that doesn't really solve the problem. It doesn't make them domesticated or tame or appropriate to be pets. They're gonna have those same behaviors that wild DNA is gonna predominate. That's why we have so many rescues here. If it had worked out and gone well, they wouldn't be living here, so. You look pretty relaxed right now, Ginger. This had to let us know when we first came up who was in charge, right? It's obligatory. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nala has the best hiss, though. <laughs> Big toothy hiss. But I, I found out when I was doing food prep the other day, I said, I wanted to double check and make sure I was correct. I said, she, she just gets baseball mesh, is that right? You know, and they checked, I see, I said, she's on a diet. <laughs> said oh that's why she's so hissy <laughs> yeah it's really easy for a serval to get overweight in a hurry Aww. and they have such long skinny legs that that's really dangerous for them. oh yeah so now why is good. that i wonder do you know why it's what is the reason that they're so prone to gain weight quickly i don't know I mean, maybe because they're built for all that running and jumping and, and then they just they don't just yeah Kind of like all of us in coronavirus, right? <laughs> you know, I'm definitely, I think that's a big benefit of coming here to Big Cat Rescue and working. It kind of counteracts that sitting all week. Uh, We're looking for cricket or... Yeah, or sometimes they hang out more towards the back and the stairs. There she is. There she is. Yeah, it was strange to come back here and clean the other day because we're so used to um, there's levels of volunteers and you go through extensive training before you get to work with certain cats. So when everybody starts out with the small cats, which is servals, bobcats, hybrids. Um, so this used to be off limits because the cougars were over there. So when we were cleaning last Sunday, it was, it was still like my body just <laughs> kind of <laughs> went like this, like, like there was an invisible barrier. It's funny what you get used to. Hey, so sweet girl. Too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't take long for that to kind of. Yeah, I take I take it seriously. That's for sure. Hello, sweet girl. You just chilling back there? Huh? So this is Cricket, and if you don't know Cricket's story. Cricket was owned by vegans. And I always like to, I used to say on tours um, that I was always careful because people can be vegans. Um, people are omnivores. So we have the ability to make uh, dietary choices as long as we're smart about it and we consider you know, all our health needs. But cats are not omnivores. Cats are obligate carnivores. So that's never a choice for them. So unfortunately, she only got broccoli and so she has suffered a lot of developmental um, issues as can be expected from not having proper nutrition this is sheena sheena you're such a cutie but you're not happy right now i think you have a very cute face 
I like her little nose. Here, do you, here. You recognize me now? Don't recognize me without my scraper pole in my bucket, huh? Aww. All right, we've been told. Feel safer. Get some bushes between us. <laughs> This is, yeah, maybe. Are we getting any questions, Carol? Uh, they Deb just posted her bio page. A lot okay, of good. Are hi. Oh, she's still not happy. And is the sound still good? Better with it clipped to my cap? Okay, good. All right, should we see, move on and see if Sergi's out? You had enough of us? Am I looking right at her? Ah. Oh, there you are. We'll stay over here. Hi, Sergi. <laughs> it's that universal hiss. Hi, sweetie. It is interesting, you start to notice their their individual features, you know, they all have slightly different noses and markings and you know, get so that you can tell the difference. Hi there. Therese says the sound is good. Oh good, thank you, thank you. So it's very nice back here. This is a shaded area. There's a little bit of a breeze blowing, so it's a nice break. My understanding is we're heading to Nikita's enclosure next for project, so That'll be full sun. Whoa. You can you can watch us work if you want. <laughs> we have something called explore.org and we have cameras attached to. That's a uh, website with 24-7 live feed cameras. So if you go to explore.org and you go to Nikita Lioness, you can watch us all work. Nikita, of course, won't be in there. She has, um, just as the tiger, she has that unroof section and she also has a roof section so that she can be kept away from us Don't while we're working. Loves the cameras. Oh good, yeah. So we have as well vacation rotation, which Duchess Tiger is currently in. You can check in on Tiger Lake and I believe Priya was swimming earlier today, so you might catch her going for a swim. Uh, we also have Bobcat Rehab. Uh, unfortunately, the kitten cabana, which used to be very popular, um, currently I don't believe has any kittens in it. Uh, there, that program. Oh, just keep. Got it. <laughs> I'm supposed to say nothing. Act casual right now. <laughs> act like okay. You're just doing Slow a lot. learner. <laughs> so uh, what Angie's doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you're the coordinator today. Yes. <laughs> and part of what they do is they run around making sure they get pictures of everybody in action and we post those to Workplace, which is how all of our people stay up to get up to date on each other and what's happening. Yes. And then uh, I do a daily briefing every day where I read whatever the coordinator's report is and I use those photos in the background so that all of our people who are watching can see what's happening here every day. Thank and, you, ladies. And Angie's an awesome coordinator. <laughs> now I would love to go see Gilligan but I have a feeling sometimes in the heat of the day we can try let's creep along the back can creep here. along and see sometimes he's not so so this is the side of the um, cages people don't often get that's to see true we're yeah on the front end of this. <laughs> we're on the very back side so we have a nice long walk now because this used to be Zukari, who is now where we saw him earlier, he has moved up to what used to be Aries Cougars enclosure. So that's why we're walking along here and you're not seeing any cat over there. Carol was walking like an old lady because I'm wearing reading glasses because he got me over here in a hurry. Oh. <laughs> ah. Well, there's nothing. Wrong with being careful. 
that's why it was so funny doing the I got the chance to do a, a virtual um, game uh, Carol shared with me last weekend and I had taken my glasses off to put the headset on and so I was it was just things were just not quite as in focus as they might have been so and it was in <laughs> Spanish because she chose the Spanish yeah version. and luckily I, I that was okay because luckily I have enough Spanish that that part it was less about the Spanish and more about me not really understanding how to use the controls. <laughs> I'm, a li I'm a little bit challenged. I'm not a, a gamer. I haven't grown up with that video game experience. So, yeah. But, you know, I say you're never too old to learn. That's my Today, philosophy. Gonna... Oh, he's right back there. Yay. Today, he's straight ahead. On the quest. They sent me the scaled down version. Oh, cool. It all of the criteria, it should be in the Oculus Store. Very Yay. Gilligan. Hi Gilligan, I'm so happy you get to see Gilligan. Here, he's such a handsome boy. Hi Gilligan. Hi. And he's back here where the air conditioner is running. You can hear it back here. You can go in that den and get air conditioning if you wanted. He's letting the door open and just laying in the pool. So Gilligan is a Canada Lynx. And they are similar to a Bobcat, but there's a lot of features that are distinctive. So you can see on the tip of his tail, it's black. And he's got those pretty prominent black tufts on his ears. And he's also got these massive paws. Those are like snowshoes. Because the species that he is, he should be hunting snowshoe hare. That's, he's built for that. So those ear tufts help him sense wind direction so he can get close to his prey. Uh, those snowshoes help him walk on top of the snow and they are known to hear snowshoe hare three feet under the snow and pounce and pull them out. Wow. And the thing I think is so cool about this is the symbiosis that if the snowshoe hare population drops then the lynx don't have as many kittens, cubs. And if the snowshoe hare population rises then the lynx population rises. So it's all just very in, kept in balance which I think is, is a pretty pretty amazing thing. I think we're having a lot of imbalance in the world and hopefully one thing that we take away from this coronavirus is maybe we figure out that we need to get back in balance when this is over and kind of hopeful about that. Uh, I know there's lots of stories and many of you out there have probably heard them about wildlife coming back in unexpected places because of less human activity, people seeing blue sky for the first time in very heavily polluted areas. So I really hope that when this is all kind of back to normal, whatever that's going to be, that we learn some lessons from it and we don't just try to get right back to where we were before. I also hope we learn to just share the earth a little better with each other as well as with the wildlife. So I don't think we're ever going back to not sharing the world. I mean, that once that ship has sailed, we're, we're just too connected and there's, yeah, I don't see that happening. One of the things that I've noticed is how little you need to get by with. And I'm hoping people will see that ah. and adopt that. And so that we'll be requiring less resources for the things we really didn't need. And didn't that's make a good happen. point. Yeah, yeah. And, and I noticed that's, that's so true, your priorities get very focused. I find, you know, what I spend my time doing and, and like you said, what you feel like you need to have. And like, I think I wear the same few pieces of clothing, like I just wash them <laughs> once a week. Like it's gotten very narrow, my wardrobe. You know, I have my big cat stuff and then I have whatever I decide to wear at home. Sometimes I just, for the fun of it, decide to get dressed up a little bit just for me. Nobody can really, they can only see me from the waist up on Zoom, so. Says, I wear the same suit exactly and you're and you're better you know more attractive than any of us aren't you it's just um if you don't know gilligan's story just it came from just such an awful awful heartbreaking situation and to see him so healthy and looking so good and calm and peaceful this is just this is what big cat rescue is all about is life-changing for these cats. The situations that they've been forced to be in prior to coming here. But yet again, as we mentioned before, no, we can't just take him to Canada and set him loose because he's never been anything but in captivity. He would not know how to survive. And he would probably be way too 
comfortable around people and that would be a danger that he would go to places um, of human activity and it's illegal <laughs> so there's that yeah they're asking if he misses his neighbor but um, i'm wondering if they mean skipper who passed on a while back he has a neighbor now who is frankie frankie's still over yeah, there yeah frankie's over there yeah they've moved so many cats lately oh i got that deer oh fly. you did wow <laughs> good job it was full of my blood yeah sorry about the bouncing around you guys <laughs> Well, do you want to go out or do you want to continue back? We could go back there and see Frankie. Sure. Okay. Hi, Gil again. You're such a good boy. You're a good boy. Behind the scenes, behind the yeah. Scenes, sure. So these are the um, refrigerated boxes where the cats can go if they want. And you can see it's four inches of styrofoam. Keep it nice and cool in there. So I know sometimes when we can't find him, um, they check in there to see if he's in there. Yeah, that's another piece of the cleaning process. So the main thing that we're doing, and Frankie likes to poop right there, but looks like they already got it. Um, they, besides finding feces, which is important every day, you know, just to, mainly to track the health of the cat, you know, just like us, it's good to go every day. And also you can see um, a lot about the cat's health with the consistency of it, um, that sort of thing. So, but we're also always checking the enclosure as we walk. We're making sure are there any areas that are, oh, sorry. Over, so my microphone's actually on the side where your mouth is. <laughs> there we go. She just adjusted me. Is that better? <laughs> I have, I don't know what it is, but I have the worst time with things like that. Upside down. Upside like down. turning things around and mirroring and yeah, anyway. But as we're walking, we're looking. Oh, is there anything, anything we need to report about the cage wire or, for instance, a platform? Is there anything going on with the platform that needs attention? Uh, you're just checking everything, and you're also hi, Frankie. You're also checking to see if you see the cat. <laughs> so, hello. He has the most beautiful eyes. Yes, she do. The beautiful eyes. So you can see that Frankie has a white tip on his tail. And remember, we looked at Gilligan's tail all being all black. It's a, one of those differences between the bobcat and the lynx. And you also see that Frankie doesn't have those really tall tufts on the tops of his ears. And not quite as massive paws. Gilligan's got the paws. So that looks like a good spot right there, shady in the ferns. Ooh, squirrel alert. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Adorable. Yeah, he's a sweetie. He's a pretty reliable pooper too, so I appreciate that about Frankie. This is a real behind the scenes today. It gets a little narrow here, so watch out. So that's another piece of um, learning, being trained to do the cleaning of the enclosures is you always want to be mindful as you're walking um, of where the cat is. Um, some of the cats are very old and, and don't move as quickly, but you still always want to know where they are because some of these cats can get from one side of the enclosure to the other pretty fast. So this is Loki. He is a hybrid cat. And he might be in that den, or he might be in that one over there. Yeah, I'm guessing back there. Yep, I see him. Okay, so see, see some eye shine in there. Up with all that. <laughs> Good question. That's a lot of clips there. So Lucky does tend to every think every time I've cleaned back here, he's been hanging out in his den. But he is a hybrid, as we spoke about earlier. Exotic cat, domestic cat. Hi, Loki. How you doing, huh? See, I'm staying cool in here is what I'm doing. Angie says she's a sponsor of Loki. Oh, thank you, Angie. And so does Jen. Oh, thank you, Jen. 
So another example of one of those hybrid cats that is living here now instead of being a pet. Somebody said it was a unicorn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so now we're behind Filmo. So between Filmo and Shiloh. And Filmo has been hanging a lot in this back den lately because I think the heat. Sometimes you can catch him really early in the morning out and about. But I think he might be back in there. I haven't seen him up in his tree the past few times. Up oh, Shiloh's out. Way up high. Way up high. One thing I know about Shiloh is he's very food motivated. He likes his food. And he's a big guy. He's a big bob. Aren't you? You're looking kind of like a lion up there. Like your little beard around you. You're looking very lion-like. So Shiloh and Filmo came with Mouser and Tom Tom. They were, I think, our very most recent rescues. As they came after the Guatemalans from California. Yeah. And Mouser is another hybrid, and Filmo and, and, and Tom Tom are bobcats. So our volunteers flew to California, rented a van, packed them up, drove back to Big Cat Rescue. Ooh, there's a nice big spider web there too. Great. I'm looking to see if I see the if I see the architect anywhere. I don't see one. Okay, I think you're safe. Yes, yeah, another thing we watch out for spider webs, snakes, all sorts of things. This is a, a pretty natural area around here, so we do have wildlife encounters. And a lot of times there's bits of wildlife show up on the observation trips. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the cats get a hold of a lizard or a snake or a squirrel. And we do have to, um, sometimes if they eat wildlife, it gives them worms. So we do have to be careful of that. I think you guys just came off of three days of beagling, didn't you? They just had flea medication, I think, was oh. it yesterday. I'll come around and see if Filmo's in his tree, but I have a feeling he's not. But we'll check. Are you up there? No. I guess no. All right. Well, I think if we don't have any more questions out there that will wrap it up for today. Everybody good out there? How often do you get flea meds? Oh, I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Ugh, I don't know. I think it's monthly. Is it monthly? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, um, I am not involved with um, medications. That's not something that I'm um, part of. So I apologize that I didn't have that answer for you. But I'm never afraid to say I don't know. One thing I never do is make anything up. <laughs> if I don't know it, I'm just A-OK -okay with saying I don't know the answer. I'll find out. And Deb says that it's quarterly, so maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, quarterly. Okay. I know the um, Hanicure is quarterly Right. for the other types of worms. Uh, Flint's doing fine after his transfusion. Yeah. Good. That was a question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, I was very, it was very sad to read about that. Yeah. That's very hard. All right. Well, everybody's telling you thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. And if you uh, want to tune in tomorrow, um, hopefully it might be singing in the rain, but we're going to have singing Sunday tomorrow at two o'clock. So uh, have a perfectly awesome rest of your Saturday.